Hi there, this is Tom. Uh, I'm giving my first review of OBS Studio with my MacBook Pro M1 Pro 8 core, um, the base model. Um, this is the first time I've used um, OBS Studio in the past, and the only reason I'm using it is one of the first things that came up in Google when I was looking for pre uh, screen recording software. Um, so I thought it'd be worth a go. Um, the screen uh, you can see in front of you is a screenshot of um, OBS Studio if you haven't used it before. Um, so you've got your uh, different scenes on the left. Um, you can add your media in under sources, your video, your audio, and then uh, on the right hand side you've got some further controls on your transitioning between different scenes and you can make changes um, to uh, your um, encoder settings and your output settings too. Uh, so if I cut to um, this scene here, which is a share of the um, Zwift um, cycling app, uh, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's, a, it's an application that you can use with your smart trainer with your bike. Um, and yeah, you can join a, join a ride with people all over the world. All over the world sorry. Um, so OBS Studio allows you to share your entire desktop screen or you can pick different applications. Um, you can only choose applications that are loaded, um, but if you, you can set something that is loaded in the past and even if you close it, it'll have a kind of screenshot of the last image on it. Um, and now if I try to actually open up Spotlight and load up so for now, uh, once it gets up and running, um, we should see, or you should see, sorry, uh, it start to load. Here we go. Um, so Zwift seemed like a good test for me. I haven't used Swift for quite some time, maybe a year or so, and I've still got to sort my garage out, if I'm honest, if I'm actually going to use it. But this seems like a, a good um, test case, really. Um, using 50, uh, 60 frames per second, sorry, and I'm just going to do a just watch. Um, so I'm only using my MacBook Pro here, I haven't got a second screen, uh, so I'm having to switch between the OBS Studio application and Zwift. Um, whereas obviously if you had a second screen plugged in, you'd have the Studio on one and, and what you were sharing on the other screen. So I'm going to switch over to the Swift application now. I'm just going to switch through some of the different views. Um, so when you're choosing one or two applications, you can run uh, OBS Studio at a higher frame per second and a higher resolution. Um, but if you do a, a share of your entire screen, you'll find that the encoder starts to max out quite quickly um, with high resolution. So you'll have to do a bit of work to pick the resolution that works for you. Um, what I've got set on here is um, sort of the highest resolution with 60 frames that I could get away with before. It, as I mentioned, it starts to starts to struggle and the encoder gets overloaded. So what I'll do now is I'll switch back to um, OBS Studio. And now what I'll do is I'll cut over to some screenshots that I've taken and i put into different scenes. So... Um, scene two here this is my um, recording settings that i've got um, you can go into great detail and, and flip it to like an advanced mode of your recording settings and really start to break it down and tweak it um, but i was just struggling to be honest i broke down and i was trying lots of different things and if, if anything my um my output was getting worse so i just switched it to indistinguishable quality large file size um, and set the encoder to to the standard there was Apple hardware and um, Apple software encoder also, but I didn't really notice them to make a significant difference. What I did do is change the replay buffer size here. Um, so if I cut to another scene now um, with a different screenshot here, this is the video uh, output. So you've got the overall canvas size, which is the black bit around the edges, and then you've got um, the output size. That's the, that's the bit that will start to see drop frames um, because it really starts to thrash um, CPU the higher it gets.
Uh, so what else? What did I get on scene five? Yep. So scene five. That is uh, just to remind you of what um, OBS Studio kind of looks like. I'll cut off, cut off the top bit there, but this, this is the nuts and bolts. Um, and like I said, you add your add your sources in. Uh, just click on the plus button underneath it. And so you can see I've got a little uh, video of me playing here in the in the bottom left, um, just overlaying. Um, the different scenes. Uh, I've had to re-add that for each time for each scene. Um, and again, this is like a, a doc on a Google Doc on a um, Microsoft Edge tab. So I can't actually control it from here. I need to come out and then flip back um, to the browser. Um, and then I can cut over to different things. Um, so that's pretty much it. That's my first play, really, with um, the OBS Studio. Uh, seems to be working fine. Um, and I'll stick this into to iMovie for my second attempt at playing with iMovie. Um, but if you've got any feedback and thoughts on how can I, how I can improve the output and the, the encoder rate using OBS Studio, that'd be great. But from what I'm seeing, watching this, um, it's holding frames per second pretty well. CPU sort of. 55 56 percent when i went to the next kind of benchmark up um in resolution it really started to struggle certainly when i was switching between applications but this seems to work really well for single use um i might have to again drop it down a little bit more if i if i want to capture the entire screen and switching in a smooth way um but that's it um thank you so much